Hello fellow Hearts of the Blue and welcome to my channel and welcome to Heavy Contrast. Heavy Contrast is a series where I try to paint one miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights. And in today's video I will be painting yet another miniature from what's objectively the best army ever, Eldar. Games Workshop sent me the new amazing striking scorpions and I just couldn't resist painting one. Don't forget that I now offer exclusive uncut painting videos on Patreon. For example, this one. It's pretty good. The link to my Patreon is in the description. Let's get cracking. As you can see, we are starting from a base coat of Sundry Dust with a Sanithol spray of White Scar. We are using normal sprays, but you can see the Sundry Dust on the bottom and the White Scar on the top. You can just use White Scar as a whole primer, but I do think this gives us a better result. So our first step is going to do a layer of one part Striking Scorpion Green and one part Orc Flesh all over the model. As always, I'm not trying to avoid any areas that are not green. Uh, we will deal with them later. I just prefer to be, make sure that all of my application is as smooth as possible. And that means I'm not going to care about the rest. As always, if you want a complete guide on how to apply contrast paints as smoothly as possible, I have a video about that that will be linked in the top right corner. After this first coat dries, I'm going to apply a second one in the same exact way and using the same exact ratio, one part striking scorpion green and one part orc flesh. With two coats of our contrast mix dry, I'm going to start highlighting this and for this I'm going to start with a mix of two parts warpstone glow and one part flask gets yellow. And what we want to do with this is a thick edge highlight all over and we also want to fix any uh, small mistakes or inconsistencies in the paint in the highlight areas, for example here, to make it nice and smooth. We can also use this to volumetrically highlight some bits like the knee pads there. This is a very transparent mix, so you shouldn't have any issues glazing with it. You don't even need to thin it down to glaze with it, that's how transparent these paints are. Which is not a bad thing, in fact we're going to take advantage of that for our own benefits. With that highlight fixing layer done, I'm going to move into the next, uh, pro now let's say proper highlight, using Mood Green. With Mood Green we're just going to do an edge highlight all across the miniature. Mood Green is such a better paint compared to the last mix. Uh, it just makes a massive difference in how pleasant it is to work with. We basically want to do a thin edge highlight all across our miniature. We want to be doing the thinnest edge highlight we can with this, but in some of the lighter areas, we may want to do, a do it a little bit thicker. And in the more rounded bits, like the kneecaps and stuff like that, uh, we can do sort of a volumetric highlight. We want this paint thin down to this sort of consistency, just moving the brush in the direction we want the highlight to be, and slowly but surely, building up the opacity. With that highlight done, we're going to move into the next one, which will be a two-part phalanx yellow and one-part mood green mix. And for this highlight, we are just going to do edge highlights and we are going to do them just on the upper sections and as small as we can. We need to concentrate these highlights over corners, edges, prominent edges, stuff like that. We can also do a volumetric highlight on the knee pads. That always looks really cool and it's really easy to do. Mm -hmm. 
And for the last highlight, we're just going to use a one-to-one -one mix of tone yellow and mood green and do very small dots on the corners. With that highlight done, we can actually stop now and it's going to look, you know, amazing. But I want to give the armor a little bit more depth. And for that, I'm going to do some glazes with Eldari Emerald. I'm applying the, I will apply the Eldari Emerald towards the shadows, giving a super cool gold look to the shading, which is going to contrast with the ultra warm look for the rest of the armor, giving a really nice contrast. As you can see, I'm doing several layers, going very thin and, you know, building this up very slowly, just like that. And you want to use a medium to thin this down to that consistency. I highly recommend you use contrast medium or Lamian medium, but you can use whatever you want. We don't need a ton of this, just a little bit. It's going to break all of that monotone green, adding some this cold look. And I think it's, it looks really, really cool. With the green armor now completely finished, we're going to move into the, well, the rest of the details. And for these, we're going to do different base coats. For all of the black details, we're going to base coat them using mechanical standard gray. For the rest of the non-metallic details, we're going to base coat them using Corax white. That includes all of these chevrons that will be yellow across the armor. You have to be very careful with them. You don't want to mess all of the lovely work that we just did on the green armor. And for the gold details, we're going to base coat them using retributor armor. Again, being extremely careful with the green work underneath. With all the base coats done, it's now time to do the contrast layers, and we are going to use three colors for this. For all the black details, we're going to use Black Templar. For the yellow details, we're going to use Yandan Yellow. And for the golden details, we're going to use Druchii Violet. I recommend you start with the black details in case you need to fix any mistakes, which is pretty easy, especially in this tangly bit. And it's much, much easier to fix with Corax White. We're using Druki Eye Violet for the gold because first of all, it looks amazing. And second of all, it's going to provide a lovely contrast with the green armor. I almost forgot to base cut one of the details, which is these tassels that the elder have in the arms and legs. And also I'm going to do the same color for the grip on the sword. And because I want to introduce a different hue, I'm going to go with Flesh Tears Red over Mechanical Standard Gray, which is going to give us a really nice deep crimson color. It's beautiful. With all those layers done and the model looking much, much better, we're going to start highlighting the black, which is the second biggest area on this model. And for this, we're going to go back to Mechanical Standard Gray. And what I'm going to do with Mechanical is a thick edge highlight all across the model. For the second highlight on the black details, we're going to use Administratum Grey. We're going to do a thin edge highlight all across the model. And 
and for the final highlight on the black I'm going to use Urthur and Grey and just do, well, very small thin highlights on the big parts, just concentrating these into the corners and stuff like that. And we can do a small dots on the small details. With the black now finished, it's time to paint the yellow. That's going to be really, really easy because, well, they're really small bits and we're not going to do too much work there. For our first highlight, I'm going to use Phalanx Yellow. And I'm just going to pick up the center of the chevrons here on the armor. And also the center of each of these beads. And for the final highlight, I'm just going to use Dawn Yellow and do a small dot of this in the center of his Chevron. Maybe here in the corners as well. With the yellow done, I'm going to move into the gold, which is also going to be a really easy color to paint. We're going to start with Retributor Armor and just highlighting all of the areas that we shaded. It's just a matter of just bringing back that metallic shine into the most prominent parts. For our next highlight, we're going to use a one-to-one -one mix of Red Twitter Armor and Stormhold Silver. I'm going to try and pick up all of the edges, corners and stuff like that on the decorations. All of the gold details are very small, so we just need to add some definition and that should be it. Just like that. That's more than enough so it reads better and we can see all of the shapes better. And hopefully you can see a little bit of what the Druchii Bio did, which is add some warmth and a really beautiful tone to the gold. With that highlight done, we are going to move into our last highlight for the gold details, that is Stormhole Silver. And I'm just going to do the smallest highlight on the edges, corners and stuff like that. Very minimal. With the gold finished, there's only just one detail left to paint before we move into the gems, and that is these weird tassels that the Eldar have on their legs. And for this, I'm just going to highlight them using Tusk or Fur, just like that. I don't want them to be like a super obvious red color. I want them to be more subdued red, so this is just perfect. I'm also going to highlight the hilt of the weapon with this. For the next highlight, I'm going to use a squeak orange. And for the final highlight, I'm just going to use a one-to-one -one mix of a squeak orange and dawn yellow, which I'm just going to use to do some small dots in the corners. Now with all of those details painted, it's time to finish the model and it's just the gems and the steel details to be done. And we're going to start with the gems and I'm going to do them in two different colors. I'm going to do the eyes red and I'm going to do the rest of the gems in teal. So for the eyes, I'm going to use flesh tears red and I have all of those details base coated with Corax white. Now I'm going to pick up the rest of the gems using Achillean Green. I'm trying to move the brass upwards while I'm doing this, trying to deposit more paint in the top section of the gem. But I will still do two layers of this to emphasize that effect even more. Once that first layer is dry, I'm going to do a second one, but more concentrated towards the top, like that. And while that dries, we're going to take the opportunity to paint all of the steel details 
with iron hand steel. There are not many, but there are some of them, and it's important to pick them up. Let's now paint the eyes, and we will start with Wild Ride the Red, which we're going to put near the front of the eyes, just like that. We're now going to move into Fire Dragon Bright. And for the final highlight, I'm going to use Luganath Orange. And finally, using pure white, we're going to paint a dot at the opposite corner of the eye. With the eyes finished, I'm going to move into the rest of the gems, and I'm going to go in the teal direction for the highlight, starting with Temper Card Blue, which I'm going to do a line opposite to where we put more concentrated Achilling Green before. For the next highlight, I'm going to move into a one-to-one -one mix of Temper Guard Blue and Uthu and Grey. And we're going to use pure white again to do a corner on the opposite side of our highlight. With the gems painted, there's just only one detail left to paint, which is very simple. It's all of the steel details. And for this, I'm going to use my mix of one part Black Templar and three parts Contrast Medium to shade it. And for the highlights, I'm just going to use Stormhole Silver. And I'm just going to do a very thin edge highlight. I just love how the new Eldar models are the perfect combination of old design and new casting technology. They are striking. Thank you for watching this video and don't forget that if you like my videos and want to help me make them, you can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below and the pinned comment of this video. Share and like this video, but most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. Patrons and members allow me to do all the cool videos that I want to make and, most importantly, they allow me to release them all for free here on YouTube. Perks include access to an amazing Discord community full of lovely people, access to many more exclusive painting videos and private one-on-one -on -one online tutorings. Help me and join the list of the coolest persons in the planet, including Chester Ross, Matt Griffiths, Tyler Hughes, Chris Gilroy, Spicy Joe, Hamish Donald, Matthew Lang, Luis Manuel Tocaoria, Inigo Garcia, Stavros Stavro, Kelly Richard, Shinji Wo, Mike Regueira, Romain, Ars Miatura, Dan Sex 92, Jazz Rex, Joe Offwood, Dr. Cathaver, Angelo Sarexo, Alastis, Rainer Hochbark, Mark Velekup, Felix Franke, Aaron Bernstein, Stefan Franiati, Bowlesley, Terry Denham, Biome, 
Howard Holtville, Stephanie Old, Nick DeMau, Robert Smith, Roger Nielsen, Oscar Jonathan Thornberg, Dan Marco, Cristalios, Carlos Rivera, Kevin Mian, Darcy Farrar, Natius Maximus, Aaron Dell, Javi Mota, Gareth Smith, Kedder Amstead, Mark Atkinson, Mark Jarvis, Josh Simpson, Christoph Moret, G-Force, Dr. V, Bartolomeu Cahuza, Lennart Lindemann, Kieran Muthel, and Kevin Sulas. And as for me, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.